This is going to be a tutorial showing uh, the ins and outs of a flash map that I'm releasing into the public domain. Uh, I got the data for the map from the, uh, uh, I believe the US CIA uh, released it under the public domain. Um, so I used that, the vector data from them, uh, brought in a flash and then organized it to make it uh, pretty quick and easy to use for different purposes. Um, the thing I like about this map is that it's uh, pretty accurate on its detail. If we zoom in here, we got a lot of detail on, on the states. Um, I've seen a lot of maps out there that are free for Flash that people have made where they're just these horribly inaccurate looking images. Um, so that's why I ended up making my own using accurate data. Um, I'm releasing it out into the public domain so anyone can use this for any purpose that they like. Um, or profit or otherwise, doesn't matter. Um, this map, I'll show you a quick uh, demo of what it looks like. Here it is. Uh, you can mouse over. The states all highlight. If you click on them, they get darker. Um, pretty simple. Uh, you can go through and disable them and make those, the disabled ones their own color and change the color of the ones that are still available. So this is a little example of states our company is located in. Um, just an example of something that this map could be used for. So just an idea. Um, I'll go into and sh uh, this and show you how it's set up. Um, we've got a folder here in the library called graphics. Um, each state is its own vector symbol with uh, its own point data. They have a lot of point data in them. Um, but none of them have any handles. They're all just these little polygonal shapes, um, which means they're a little bit smaller file size than if they all had handles. Um, altogether, I believe the outputted Swift is going to be around 45 or 50 kilobytes, so about the same as a ping or a JPEG of a, of a map of the US. Um, but since these are all vector, uh, you can scale them and reuse these symbols without increasing the file size, which is handy. Um, so that's the graphics, pretty straightforward. Under buttons, we've got these states, and same idea, except we're using those graphics for the up, the down, and the, the over state. Uh, the only difference being that the brightness is increased by 25% here. There it is, brightness, 25. It's negative 25 on the down state. And then the hit symbol, in some cases, uh, like right here, these coastal cities, will have their own special hit state to make it easier for these outside spots. So every state that needs these little extra coverings around them has it. Um, I'm using the symbol um, of the actual state for where it's connected and touching other states and for when it's uh, touching the coastline here, the ocean that has these little islands, that's where it's drawn in. This extra drawn in area is using about uh, eight points. So I try and keep it as low as possible. Um, pretty pretty straightforward there. Um, we'll come back out to the main part here. Uh, it is set up with um, a couple of layers. We've got the outline strips, mainly just this coastal spot along the outside. You can choose what color that can be and how thick you want that to be. Um, we've got the states themselves, which there they all are. We've got lines that separate all of the states. You can change the color of the lines individually. And then I have a text layer here that uh, I added my text onto for this file, which you can read later. Uh, and then an actions layer, of course, that just says stop. Um, so I'll show the uh, example scene. Here it is. Uh, same setup, except I've added one more extra thing in here. I split the states into two groups. So I changed the uh, the stroke layer so that it's uh, fill and stroke are the same color. Um, here are the states that are interactive that you can mouse over. And here are the states that are inactive uh, that don't respond at all. Um, and then we've got the lines, which are a dark green to match that green shade. Uh, and then the text and the and the actions there. So I'll show how I switch these over from one to the other. You just click on a state, so we'll click on Iowa there. Uh, it's instance of Iowa-button, so I'll swap that. 
go down to graphics, states, I'm looking for IA, there it is, and swap that out. It's been swapped, uh, so now it's, at, it's IA, it's not going to have the button stuff, so I'm going to switch it over to graphic. And I'll change its style over to tint, and it's using the same tint as the other one. So I'm just changing the coloration here, switching it to a graphic, switching out the symbol so whenever you mouse over it doesn't respond. Um, and that's it. There, there's no, no uh, the, the cursor won't change when the mouse is over, the colors, whatever color you like. Um, you know, we can set these to whatever, whatever you want, but in this case I just had it match up this. So that's that's all there was to. Um, I'll show you changing the color of. Uh, oh, and then once it's done, cut it and then paste it in place on the the no click layer. Um, so I'll lock everything down except for the states themselves. So there they are. These are all clickable, and they are all changed um, using a filter for hue. You can also adjust the contrast and brightness and saturation as well. So if we wanted to make these a different shade, like uh, maybe red or something, let's see, there, there's a red shade, and we'll up the, con the saturation on it. That's good, and we'll oops, don't want to mess too much with contrast. Uh, turn the brightness down some, and there's there's a nice little red color. Um, and of course you can mess with that more and perfect it, but all of the states are now updated and since we're using the filter, um, whenever we render this out uh, and we go to the example, uh, they all still react whenever you mouse over and click on them. They still get brighter and they still dim when, when they're clicked. Now there is some slight changes in, in these guys uh, where it's not quite as bright right now, but I believe that has to do with the changing the contrast. So. Uh, just be aware when you're toying and, and there you may have to make some subtle adjustments. Um, and if this isn't going to be something that you're going to change the colors on a lot, you're going to be change, just setting to one, you can go in and edit the original graphic files, the original graphic symbols in the library under clips. Let me delete that. Under uh, graphics and states, you can go in here and change this blue tone to whatever you like on each one. You'd have to go through and open up all 50 states and change their color once, but um, you know, it's flash, it's animation, it's tedious, so nothing out of the ordinary there. I tried to make it as simple and as as and quick to, to alter things as I could, but uh, that's that's pretty much it. Um, and then you just export it out, and you can use these for whatever you want. You create your own scenes, your own timeline animations. When you click on something, that state uh, moves and, and gets bigger, and a box shows around it with more information, or or uh, you know any anything you can imagine. You can add any any um, action scripting to it to uh, to do these effects as well. Um, but I try to make it as simple as possible without using any action scripting. Um, and just so that other people would have access to a, a map if they want to do things in Flash uh, related to it. And just wanted to throw one quick example in there like so, so people get an idea of what you can do with it. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, that's everything. Enjoy.